Please join me on this journey of how ape become a human. We will unravel interaction of Homo sapiens with other hominids and how these interactions have shaped us, modern humans. From Sahelanthropus chidensis, seven to six million years ago, it took several species to evolve to Australopithecus africanus, two to three million years ago. This is where picture becomes clearer. Australopithecus wandered off African continent, exploring areas where no hominid has set a foot. Australopithecus has made it to North Africa, Europe, and Asia, and as climate differ wildly between those areas, so will be evolution of future species to come. In western part of Eurasia, most prominent species was Homo neanderthalensis, 400,000 to 40,000 years ago, likely one of the first hominids outside of Africa that we would encounter. Bigger, more muscular hominid were better adapted to cold and harsh environments of the area. Unlike common believe, they were quite developed and were highly skilled hunters and gatherers, using sophisticated tools such as spears, knives, and scrapers made from stone, bone, and wood. They also had complex social structures, lived in small family groups, and cared for their sick and elderly. However, Neanderthals were not destined to be sole rulers of their land. Enter Homo sapiens, 300,000 years ago to present. Homo sapiens evolved in Africa and for some time stayed there, with earliest migration outside of Africa around 120,000 years ago, and the most significant one, 60 to 70,000 years ago. However, it doesn't exclude possible earlier minor expeditions up north. Currently, it is believed that there was no systemic war between the two species, rather complex mix of cooperation, survival, and competition. These behaviors even include sharing of tools and possibly even complex social interactions. Most of humans outside of Africa carry Neanderthal's DNA, making a clear case for interbreeding. However, it is not clear until what conditions it happened. Extinction of Neanderthals, as everything in this video, is a complex issue, which likely included ever-changing climate leading to periods when food was scarce to find. During these periods, Homo sapiens were able to outgame Neanderthals in competition for food. We had better cognitive function, were able to better cooperate in groups, developed more advanced tools and weapons, and finally, better adaptability. We were likely to cooperate in good times, but even as early as then, in bad times, we ensured that our own kind is safe before anything else. Additionally, it is believed that when mass migration of Homo sapiens happened 60 to 70,000 years ago, we brought new diseases that well established for hundreds of thousands of years Neanderthals were never exposed to. Yet again, does it remind you anything? Lastly, it is believed that interbreeding with better adapted humans has basically assimilated Neanderthals into Homo sapiens. One can make a comparison line with modern, globalized human races continuously mixing to create something new, potentially best adapted. With all of that, technically Neanderthals as a species went extinct about 40,000 years ago. Technically, because on average we have 1 to 2% of Neanderthals' DNA in us. Homo erectus, 1.9 million to 140,000 years ago, evolved in Eastern Asia. They have survived and prospered for likely far longer than Homo sapiens will. Homo erectus had longer legs, reduced arm length relative to body size, and a more efficient stride, which allowed them to cover long distances while foraging for food and exploring new environments. Evidence also suggests that Homo erectus was capable of controlling and using fire. Evidence of group living comes from fossil sites that contain multiple individuals of different ages and sexes, as well as evidence of communal activities such as tool making and butchering. Homo erectus was a highly successful and long-lived species, persisting for over 1.5 million years and spreading across diverse environments, ranging from tropical forests to grasslands. This adaptability and longevity make Homo erectus one of the most successful hominin species in terms of geographic range and temporal duration. Even though there is currently no evidence of direct contact between Homo sapiens and Homo erectus, they did share some common timeline, and I like to think that there was few isolated incidents when someone whose DNA I'm carrying personally witnessed that evolutionary miracle. Homo floresiensis, 100,000 to 50,000 years ago, were a regional variant of Homo erectus lived in Flores Island, now Indonesia. They likely reached the island when sea level was at its lowest, and when sea level rose again, they ended up being isolated in there for tens of thousands of years, making it one of the most unique hominid species to ever exist. Being true to their Homo erectus ancestors, they have adapted to that environment in an unprecedented way. As food resources were scarce, the smaller specimens survived and carried over their DNA, with average height of around 1 meter, 3.3 feet. Arguably premature extinction of Homo floresiensis has been recently tied to arrival of Homo sapiens to this region. 
Likely competition for food and land resources has driven Homo floresiensis to their end, as Homo sapiens were stronger both physically and cognitively. Interbreeding has not been proven, but very likely in these circumstances. Just imagine being well-traveled at that point. Homo sapiens, arriving to the island where you discover your lookalikes, who are third of your size. Potentially, you could have shared some social, cultural, and technological experience, but at the first moment your family starts to experience starvation, imminent in this situation, the dwarfs would be an easy target to take the food from. Homo soloensis, 550 to 150,000 years ago, lived on the neighboring island of Java, currently Indonesia as well. They were luckier to live on a bigger island, and their average height of around 160 centimeters. Similarly to Homo floresiensis, they were offspring of Homo erectus, who in a similar fashion ended up being trapped on an island. Unfortunately for Homo soloensis, island if Java is much easier accessible from the mainland, and competition with Homo erectus and Homo sapiens considered to be leading cause of their extinction. It is likely that Homo soloensis and Homo sapiens have been interbreeding, and like Neanderthals, have assimilated into our DNA. Homo Denisova, 400,000 to 40,000 years ago, were recently discovered in Siberia. They believe to have branched out from Homo Neanderthalus some 400,000 years ago, which would make sense as they had to face similar harsh environments just thousands of miles apart. There is still a lot to be discovered about them, but so far archaeological evidence from Denisova Cave suggests that Denisovans were capable of making sophisticated stone tools and had a complex culture. They likely used tools for various tasks, including hunting, butchering, and processing plant materials, similar to other contemporary hominin species. It has been confirmed that Homo sapiens have interbred with Denisovans. Genetic studies have identified specific Denisovan DNA variants in modern human populations that may have provided selective advantages. For example, some Denisovan alleles are associated with adaptations to high-altitude environments, suggesting that interbreeding with Denisovans may have conferred physiological benefits to modern humans migrating into regions such as the Tibetan Plateau. Currently, there is no known cause of their extinction. Until then, I will make a wild assumption that they have faced same faith as so many other hominid species. They were outnumbered and outsmarted by Homo sapiens, who took the best from their DNA and carried on in the journey. Homo heidelbergensis, 700,000 to 200,000 years ago, have been found in both Africa and Eurasia. Homo heidelbergensis had a robust and muscular build, with long limbs adapted for endurance, walking, and running. They likely had a similar body size to Homo sapiens. Homo heidelbergensis exhibited a combination of primitive and derived anatomical features that distinguish it from earlier hominin species, such as Homo erectus and Homo habilis. Homo heidelbergensis, even though roamed the earth far before Homo sapiens, still have shared some timeline with us and Neanderthals. While direct evidence of interbreeding between Homo heidelbergensis and Homo sapiens is lacking, it remains a possibility, particularly if the two species coexisted in close proximity for extended periods. Lastly, Homo naledi, 335,000, 226,000 years ago, were recently discovered in South Africa. Homo naledi exhibits a unique combination of primitive and derived anatomical features. The presence of Homo naledi fossils deep within the Rising Star Cave system, accessible only through a series of narrow and treacherous passages, suggests deliberate disposal of dead individuals. The timeline between Homo naledi and Homo sapiens clearly intersects, however there are no known links between the two. Having said that, I do believe in a few isolated cases of interaction between these two wandering hominid species. There are many more species that have not been covered in this video, and likely countless hominids are yet to be discovered, but I wanted to focus on a particular tale of Homo sapiens, and hominids we definitely, or likely, interacted with. This journey was full of love and hate, cooperation and competition, journey that was filled with unbelievable stories that were told from generation to generation, but eventually were lost. Stories of other hominids seen, from the bigger, more muscular and brutal, to the ones that looked like hobbits. Stories of adventures taken over deserts, jungles and tundra. Homo sapiens' journey includes not only our adaptation, but the treasure we took along the way. Treasure of the DNA taken from other hominids who have extinct, likely by our hand, but made us, modern humans, indestructible force of nature. I hope you enjoyed your lunch break, my pinnacle of evolution. Thank you for watching this far. I've been researching this particular topic for longest time and never was able to found the information laid out in the way I needed slash wanted. Hence, I decided to make it myself, spending countless hours to do the research and writing. Long story short, you own me a like and a cup of coffee. Cheers.